Christian Axiom TV. I am your host, Tom Burritt, and this is episode 47. Uh, had a great time doing episode 46, but you know, the more I'm playing the show here, uh, the more things are coming up, and the more I realize that there was just so many detailed things that I wanted to get into that I just couldn't in that last episode. So um, we're going to do part two here. Um, we are again back in the pit uh, in Wicked, um, and um, you know, uh, as I played the show last night, um, I made a mental note of some things that, you know, little tricks that I do, little, little little things that, you know, when they all combine together throughout the whole show, I think really help make this to be manageable. So that's today's axiom. And, you know, it's just, you know, the little things that you can do. Uh, it's all about the little things that you can do, um, you know, that can really help something with such a big setup and some uh, difficult switches and everything like that can go so much easier. So that's today's axiom. Um, and so as I played the show last night, I just made a bunch of mental notes here about um, <clears throat> some spots that that are uh, I think problematic, and some and some some of the ideas I have to get around them. Uh, the first thing in, in in the selection called one short day, um, there's a bell part that's you know, it's not difficult, but it's written out in triplets, and the singers are not even close to actually singing that rhythm. <laughs> so be sure when you're playing something like this that you're really listening to uh, the rhythm. They're you know they're they're changing the triplet rhythm into a sixteenth note rhythm. And you know, in that situation, don't be uh, you know don't be a loser and try to fight the, your way through those triplets. And um, you know, it's the exact same melody that the singers are singing, so I'm just playing it just like they are. Um, so be flexible, be listening is the point there. Um, you know, I use one-handed roll on cymbal cymbals like five or six times. So yes, you can actually use your one-handed roll for something else than playing marimba. And you know, I'm shaking a, a shaker while I'm doing a cymbal swell, so that's a really handy skill to be able to have um, for something like this. So who knew you could use one in a roll for something other than marimba, right? But you can here for sure. All right, uh, moving on. Um, efficient use of space. Okay, we mentioned this in the last episode, but I wanted to show you a couple things that I do. Um, so I can get to anywhere from this stool, left or right, and be able to play anything. Um, so the other thing, too, and I'll bring it over here to see it. If you see the xylophone, um, it's kind of dark in here. I apologize for that. But I have a little um, towel with some sticks on the low end of the xylophone because I don't, I don't play those notes. But it's a great spot for a mallet, a mallet tray. Um, and also, it might be difficult to see, but the, the, vi or the, the, the glock is pretty far over the low end of the xylophone. And what I had to do to make that happen was... Um, get like one of those um, those bell stands that are height adjustable and um, actually this brace goes all the way through the inside of the resonator and through the space between the C sharp and the B flat uh, that allows me to get that um, glock uh, much closer to me and over notes that I don't even need on the xylophone so that's a good example of um, a good use of space uh, let's see um, I think that's a, it for that um, Sometimes you have to use an implement on, on an instrument that you just don't want to. But there's a spot in um, musical number 18 and 19 where there's just, it's a 5 8 thing at the beginning of Act 2 on a low F on a timpani, and then boom, goes right into the next number on a bell lick. So um, there's just absolutely no time to pick up a mallet. So what I do is just, I play the, that last little timpani thing on the low F with my bell mallets. And you might think, oh my gosh, I can't believe he's doing that. But <clears throat> sometimes it's what you have to do. Uh, because that bell entrance is so important in that next number. So I guess there, you know, just be willing to, obviously it would make no sense to play the Glock with the Tiffany mallet, right? So sometimes you have to do that in, in shows like this. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a very popular song in this called Popular. Sorry about that. Uh, and it actually calls for bell beats. And um, the easiest way, I think, to deal with that is, and I think it works real well, is to um, just use some felt. And so my daughter, being so cute, uh, when she was out getting this for me, actually got the Wicked Colors. See that? So if you've seen the show, you know that this is the color of all the publicity and all the posters, the sort of green and black and the witches and all that. So anyway, that's kind of fun and cute. And I can give a shout out to my daughter, Kayla, on that one. Whoa. Okay. As I throw my iPod. Uh, let's see. So bell mutes, they're easily, obviously, easy to put on and off. Um, so music stands, too, you know. I only have two music stands in this, one for the vibe that only holds one, um, one um, number, uh, number 18. That's it. Everything else, there's a couple little other vibe things from there, 
but for the most part, I don't, I don't need to have a stand for the, a separate stand for the clock or for the chimes. And the other thing about that is this particular show, I don't think all of them would work like this, but this particular show, I never have to open the music more than this. More than just, you know, the size of a, the size of a stand. Okay? So that can really save you from having to open, open, you know, four sheets and folding it back up and putting it away. Um, I don't even need a double stand. You can see from here that I only have one music stand there. And so I'm just turning a lot, you know, a lot of effort by the copyist went into um, making sure you could make all those page turns. So there's no need to uh, be opening the music if you don't have to. So that's something if you plan, I think you can kind of avoid. And I found that to be very, very helpful. Um, nice little trick on the mark tree that actually Zhou Long, who was a composer, uh, a Chinese composer, uh, showed me with Duke playing one of his pieces when I was back playing with hammers and sticks, is to use your fingers just for a real soft swell on the uh, bell tree. Uh, the mark tree, sorry, the mark tree. Um, just run your fingers across the string. Way up in here, produces a really nice, subtle, softer um, little flourish. That's a nice little trick that um, a composer gave to me, actually. Imagine that. Uh, let's see. So the other thing, too, that's been really helpful, is, in, we talked about the importance of timpani and gauges um, in rehearsals. You don't usually get this music uh, until like the first rehearsal, but as you're rehearsing, and you know, someone actually did this already for me, but write in the stick, write in the tuning change right after the notes you play. Um, so that way, you know, the next time it comes around, you're already tuned up, ready to go. Um, so just write it in pencil what the, ch what the change is, and do the change as soon as you, as soon as you finish that timpani note. Uh, there's, a, there's a number in here, I can't remember which one it is, where um, you're shaking a shaker constantly, and you're playing vibraphone, a melody in the vibraphone while you're shaking, you're playing melody in the glock, you're playing suspended cymbals, you're playing triangles. So practice shaking. <laughs> practice shaking a shaker and being able to, to do other things with the other hand so the shaker doesn't get discombobulated. Sorry, that wasn't quite the right word, but whatever. Um, and then I just want to talk real quick about the vamp. Um, vamps, you know, typical sh shows like this have a lot of vamping. And essentially what the conductor will do is um, if, if there's something that's repeated a number of times, he'll hold up a, you know, one for first time, second time, third time, and usually it'll, it'll be written in your part, or you'll need to write it, that we're always going to do this repeat for four times. And then he's always very clear, at least this guy who's fantastic, Adam, he's just great. Um, he'll give you the downbeat. The next thing is, um, the next thing is uh, on an actual vamp where it's indeterminate, he just simply holds, he or she will simply hold up your, their index finger, and as soon as they're ready to go, you just, boom, they do one of those. And, and so, you know, that might seem on the surface like, well, duh, that's pretty easy, but it's not as easy as you think, and it um, takes a little getting used to. And actually looking at the monitors, too, you can see I showed you last time, there, I do have a monitor here and over the bass drum. Um, just getting used to looking at a conductor through that is very strange for somehow, for some reason that's very difficult. So I've actually tried to set this up so I can see him straight on too much without having to use the monitors too much, but um, all the other musicians are really just basically using monitors, so that takes a little getting used to as well. All right, so that's today's show. Um, maybe it was good. I want to know, as the question of the episode is, I want to know your tricks. I want to know the little things. It doesn't have to be show related, but just a little thing you learn along the way. Uh, I really want, you know, I'm so incredibly gracious you guys want to hear what I have to say, and, and I just want to learn back from you guys. So tell me your tricks, let me know what these little things are that you do that uh, you think help a lot so we can share and um, keep this thing going. So thank you so much, you guys, and I'll see you next time.